Hello everyone and welcome to a new episode of the OC Show. My name is Peter and this is Tim. And uh, as you can see, we're back in the HWL office in Taipei, Taiwan, coming from Montreal last week. Uh, it's a lot warmer in Taipei, I must say. It's uh, a lot more humid as well. Um, That's right. So first things first, let's talk about the LAN ETS and basically the North American World Tour event that we hosted last week. I must say everything went, went pretty well, uh, considering that we had um, a lot of uh, amateurs joining in the, in the workshop. Yeah, I thought you were about to say a lot of sleep deprivation, but yeah, a lot of amateurs as well, indeed. Like um, at some point, it was even so busy that we had a queue of people waiting to get into the workshop. So quite a lot of people were interested to um, first learn about overclocking if they didn't know. And there was a few guys that already knew about it that had seen Truthman in the previous years uh, at the LAN ETS doing demonstrations. So they were very eager to actually be able to try it out. By it, was, uh, it was pretty interesting. One of, the, um, uh, one of the participants who actually made it to the final, and I think he finished second, hmm. he explained that he knew what overclocking was and he did have an overclockable system, but he never really dared to try it out. So this workshop gave him um, an opportunity to test what overclocking is about and see that it's actually not as dangerous as he would think it is. Yeah. You know, we used XTU to give them a very basic introduction to how overclocking works. So he explained how, how the frequency was kind of calculated and then mm -hmm. how you can use the benchmark to determine your performance and what you have to look at when you're overclocking. And then we gave the guys about 30 minutes to set their best score and then the best people could attend in the final. Yeah, so in the end, uh, everyone pretty much maxed out at their, at their own level the, the competition system they had. Uh, basically just playing with multiplier and with uh, base clock a little bit, a bit of voltage in there, and that's about it, right? No, no memory, anything yeah. complicated. So. We used the, the Pentium K CPU, it's a G3258. Correct. And um, the systems were provided by Microbytes. I do have to mention this. Microbytes was a fantastic partner in this event, not only giving the systems to overclock, but also some pretty awesome prizes. So yeah. the, the, guy, the guys who won the competition, they went home with pretty much the same system that they were using at the event. Yeah. And we used a, um, a regular air cooling, and some of the CPUs could actually go to 4.5, 4.6 gigahertz through XTU. Which is quite amazing, I must say. Yeah, no problem at all, actually. All of them were skating that high yep. just from the start. So this was our first World Tour event, and um, we learned a lot of uh, things from both the amateur workshop and the extreme workshop. Uh, the lessons that we learned we'll take to our next event, which is in a couple of weeks only at Gamers Assembly in France. And I believe you have some updates on the yeah. World event. So the, the French event is going to be about three times the size, at least, of the one in uh, Montreal. So a lot more attendees, a lot more LN2 and a lot more amateurs around there to, um, to eventually learn about overclocking. So there will be a pretty much the same program gathering for the guys that already know about LN2. Uh, there will be some, of course, some, some uh, how you call it, uh, like security workshop taught by our dear friend Truthman. So All right, the, we have the LN2 <laughs> certification. <laughs> yeah, that's it. And uh, then we'll have um, the same workshop concept for amateurs. At, Gamer, uh, at Gamers Assembly, there's 2,000 gamers, so that's about the double amount of people there's uh, at the LAN ETS. It's, it's also a lot more visitors. There's, I think, 11,000 visitors mm -hmm. going to the Gamers Assembly every year. So it's going to be quite a, quite a packed schedule. So for people that are interested to go and participate in the workshop, it's probably a good idea uh, to come very early on the first morning and uh, subscribe for a workshop slot like this. You, you don't miss out and you have enough time to uh, attend the workshop and be able to practice a little bit and then qualify for the competition. So it's going to be yeah pretty interesting. And I'm pretty sure the, the, the visibility is going to be a lot better than we had at LAN ETS as well. So yes. Um, I'm expecting it's going to be uh, hellish to get everyone to do the workshop and then participate in the in the competition, but it's going to be um, a lot of fun again. Yeah, especially because we are on the land floor, right uh, among the gamers. So it's going to be uh, yeah, literally 700 to 1,000 people just sitting in the same room. Oh yeah. So there's probably going to be uh, one. The workshop is going to run probably quite quite later than we had for the land ETS. And it's going to be also a lot more people passing around or just checking out what uh, the extreme guys are doing with the liquid nitrogen. So it's going to be um, quite interesting and fun. Yeah. yeah, looking forward to it. Speaking of live events, 
which uh, kind of tr- where, where we try to uh, find new amateurs to join overclocking. Uh, there's a community event um, in uh, in Germany hosted by PC Games Hardware Extreme. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it's uh, the Tom is I think the, uh, Tom the, Laske, yeah, the, he's the editor guy from, at uh, PC Games Hardware. Yeah, and uh, Roman from the their Bauer basically they host the ROG camp I believe. Yeah. So what is that about? So it's a ROG camp. So it's linked to Asus, mm-hmm. of course. And uh, so it's this, the concept here is to um, teach people about uh, LN2 overclocking. So it's open for people that are already uh, aware of overclocking, that already do overclocking at home as a as a either air cooling or water cooling, but that if they never tried LN2 at home before and uh, that are willing to, um, to qualify first on air and water cooling and then attend uh, first uh, first day where they have a like a teaching of how to insulate how to how does it work how to prepare for ln2 session and then on the second day they are by themselves benching on the ln2 for a competition so it's going to be quite interesting and the qualifiers are running right now in OC sports yeah i so said there was already uh, over 15 people trying yeah, to qualify I, think I saw 17 this morning okay 17 so. already that is um I must say, a very interesting strategy of PC Games Horror to kind of recruit new overclockers to join their team. Well, it's very clever because, you know, mm-hmm. you get usually the most points from the guys that do LN2. So mm-hmm. if you want to get more points for your team, it's actually very, very intelligent to just yeah. re- recruit or train LN2 guys. I think we're going to be there as well. It's the, it's actually the weekend after the Gamers Assembly. So we'll be flying to to France, then travel through Belgium to get to Germany, then back to Belgium, and then fly back to Taipei. Mm-hmm. So it's going to be quite a, quite a trip again, yeah. once once more. But it's all it's all in good fun, right? Yeah. Um, another competition I want to talk to you, to you about is um, the old school is best school competition. Yeah. So we had a, guy, a couple <laughs> of guys in the forum who are asking for um, overclocking competitions with more of the old school hardware. Way back when we started running the, our first competitions, we had this uh, this series called the HW OC Challenges. So every month we would um, select a certain benchmark and then a certain platform, and then the guys had to figure out which is the best platform and then which is uh, the best uh, motherboard to to use mm-hmm. for that specific competition. And it was a lot of fun. Um, but over the over time, we 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 kind of exchanged those monthly OC challenges with the team cups with the country cups and now with the road to pro divisions okay, yeah. um, in which we already have a legacy div- division as well but the guys wanted to have something back that is really focused on the very very old school hardware so um, the, uh, a German member called Strunkenbolt brought this up and then we had a, a staff member on Antinomy take this uh, take this ID and kind of work with it and I think on April 1st we'll go- we're going to launch the first round of this uh, of this competition series mm-hmm. which is just with very very old hardware. Do you think think about GeForce 5 and think about okay, Socket yeah. 3, Slot 1, uh, Pentium 2s, all that kind of very very old hardware. So all the guys that didn't sold all their old hardware by like um, I would say just by love of it and couldn't get rid of it. They are going to be at a strong advantage here. Well, I think uh, Antinomy chose to have the competition um, um, span over two months. Specifically okay. because the people who want to participate in these competitions, you need to do some, some research. Yeah. Do research first on which motherboard or which graphics card or which CPU has the best performance and overclocking capabilities. And then also you need to eBay for it. You know, you have to, well, I suppose, yeah. you have to <laughs> find that really old best overclockable hardware and then you have to bid for it and hope that no one else swipes the 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 product from eBay before you so it's okay so if you have have all the hardware and you don't plan to compete it might be actually a good chance to also sell it right? <laughs> we've you've had that comment from other people before that anytime we run a competition on older hardware the prices for this hardware spike on eBay which is which is pretty funny well, especially if you want to plan to bin CPUs for instance or are looking for a very specific motherboard or because back then there was like several SKUs that were pretty good for clocking so oh yeah like the the old graphics cards would have you'd find graphics card with different memory chips in um in uh, the the ns speed which is the nanoseconds mm. of the of the 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 latency of the memory chips so the lower the better so you have to find those specific graphics cards that were actually built to be overclocked very very high all right so that's a community initiative and starting on april 1st yeah no april fools joke no hopefully no <laughs> you better not all right 
So another thing that is uh, happening within the community is the translation of HWBot, and here yeah. it has been quite active. I think we started a translation program about six months ago now, something mm -hmm. like that. And uh, we have over 15 languages in the works, uh, among which uh, French and German, which are now in the final testing phase. I yeah, say. I think Indonesian, Spanish are also evolved quite far, Dutch ex actually yeah. as well. U Ukrainian is going very fast lately Oh yeah, as well, true. So. But then French and German are already, already loaded up on our UAT test site. Mm -hmm. And from the looks of it, everything seems, uh, seems pretty solid. So we'll be pushing those to our production server very, very soon. So, and then you'll be able to enjoy HWBot in French and German. So if you can't speak English very well, learn a new language. Preferably yeah. French or, or German. <laughs> <laughs> Ideally, yes, at least for now. Uh -huh. uh, actually, we, we tested the French one during the LAN ETS event because uh, it was already pre-loaded uh, pre on the, uh, the HWBot site. And if you create an account now and you select French as a language, it's going to be popping up in French already. It's actually based on your geography as well. So it would detect the IP where you're from and then the, the, the browser settings as mm. well. And since we were in, in Quebec, which is the French-speaking part of Canada, it would automatically load up the French translations. Yeah. And, and it seems to have helped. Yeah, also, love. actually, Chinese, simplified Chinese oh, is ready as yep, well. Yep, yep. A lot of languages, I suppose. Awesome. <laughs> A lot more people can participate. Yeah. All right. This was it for the OC show. See you back next week. And um, oh, don't forget to check in in the Q&A. Yeah. So next Q&A is going to be as usual on uh, Sunday, 9 p.m. Eastern time uh, in the U.S., which is going to be three in the morning uh, Europe time. And uh, since we changed, well, they changed time. We didn't change time. So it's going to be 9 a.m. for the people here in the Taiwan um, time zone. So Hong Kong as well. And I think I'll make it. Yeah. So yeah, tune in on the Twitch OCTV channel. All right. Of course. Bye. Bye.